Pokemon? Pokemon? The name has always eluded me. I don't know how you pronounce it still to this day. You might hear your grandma talk about it, like, what in tarnation is a poker man's? But what your grandma doesn't know, and what many don't realize, is that Pokemon is the largest media grossing franchise of all time. If you go to Google with your grubby little hands and search highest grossing media franchises, click the Wikipedia tab that your English teachers told you to never reference for whatever reason. That was bullshit, by the way. Pokemon is the top of the list with over $109 billion in revenue. That's over half of a Jeff Bezos. That's 45% of an Elon Musk net worth at the time of making this. You would think it's Star Wars or Mickey Mouse or like Barbie or some shit. Nah, it's this little yellow rat. A little rat makes more money selling one new pair of gym socks than you will ever make in your lifetime. Most of this revenue comes from, no, not the video games. No, not the Mewtwo Strikes Back movie. No, not the sweaty gym sock. Okay, actually, it's the sweaty gym socks. It's the merchandise. Pokemon anything sells like hotcakes. Pokemon shirts. Pokemon potato chips. Pokemon Airsoft Guns, Pokemon Air. Anything Pokemon is like a wildfire of money. Pokemon prints money. I was born right around the time Pokemon was really blowing up, so I wasn't there on the front lines to witness the beginnings of what would become the highest grossing media franchise of all time. I was just a little baby bitch, like sucking on a pacifier and making Waluigi noises. I, however, did take a liking to Pokemon from a very young age. I have a very interesting story about it because Pokemon literally taught me English. I mean, of course my mom read me books and like, okay, it wasn't the sole teacher, but I taught myself a lot of the language from just playing the game. I was like three when my parents' friend brought over a bunch of used Pokemon stuff that their kid had already grown out of. Imagine an early 2000s white boy with a bowl cut jumping around the room like on cocaine because that shit was like crack to me. I would mess with the cards, the toys, I'd play Pokemon Red on the Game Boy like every day. It's a miracle I don't have some sort of eye problem <laughs> because I was glued to that thing. And if you've ever played on an original Game Boy Color, unless you're in a well-lit room, it's like trying to understand hieroglyphics in an unlit cave. The fact that that thing didn't have a lit up screen is baffling. Regardless, I was obsessed. I was experiencing Pokemon brain rot. Pokemania, if you will. Meet the latest craze to sweep the country. Characters named Pikachu, Mankey, and Snorlax. Be forewarned if you haven't been already, the hottest thing in the 12 and under set is coming soon to a theater near you. Pokemon the movie joins Pokemon the video game. And this is going to be one of the hottest selling toys for the holidays. This is a talking Pikachu. Finally tonight, it's the biggest thing from Japan since the Power Rangers. Pokemon is an undeniable obsession with children across the country. If you guys don't know what Pokemon is, you are... <laughs> well, you're in need of some serious remedial toy education. It's a Japanese term short for pocket monster. So far this year, sales of trading cards, toys, and video games surpassed half a billion dollars in the U.S. Another four billion was sold overseas. So this almost doubles our market. We expect this to probably be the biggest success in uh, the toy industry's history. And the Pokemon is creating a monster of a commotion for American kids. That's all they're wanting now is pure Pokemon. We haven't sold any yo-yos or Star Wars merchandise in a long time. It's Pokemania everywhere. Pokemon as a concept was coined by Ken Sugimori and friends who formed the company Game Freak. Satoshi Tajiri was really into insects, and the idea of insects traveling along the wire of the Game Boy Link cable really intrigued him. Pitching this idea was difficult until the help of Shigeru Miyamoto pushed the concept through to Nintendo. Nintendo then spent six years developing the game before finally releasing it. Much like many development projects in software and gaming alike, the project nearly drove the newfound company Game Freak, the company working on Capsule Monsters as it was called at the time, to bankruptcy. Many employees quit, worked overtime, and even worked unpaid just to get the project finished. You know, capitalism and all that. What's really inspiring to me is the art of Ken Sugimori. I don't think there's anything more enthralling than Sugimori's signature nostalgic watercolor art, the original Pokemon games and cards. Early concept art is very interesting to look at as well, with many of the Pokemon resembling Rhydon, or what is now known as like the substitution doll used in the games. Here's Godzilla fighting Donkey Kong with a baseball cap. That's cool. Can we get a Donkey Kong Pokemon in the next game? <laughs> Donkey Kong.
Pokemon. Okay. Some stuff obviously didn't last, like this trainer whipping a ghastly or Lapras without ears. But this early concept art is so endearing and almost mystical to look at in today's age. It's hard to imagine what Pokemon would be like without Sugimori's artistic charm. And who's to say if it would even be as popular? As a lot of official merchandise spanning from the cover of Pokemon Red and Blue to most of the early cards themselves featured Ken Sugimori's art. His style defined Pokemon's image and still does to this day, even as Sugimori has taken a more relaxed role. A man of many words. Thanks, Ken. Pokemon was then finally released in its first iteration through the games Pokemon Green and Pokemon Red in Japan on February 27th, 1996. It started off with modest sales, but really started to hit it big when they announced a secret rare new Pokemon that players could obtain via a contest. That ended up being Mew. This spiked the sales, and the success of the game rose quickly, leading to the release of Pokemon Blue in Japan, which had improved sound design and graphics. A card game got developed as well, releasing later that year with a base set of 102 cards. A manga was being made. Even an anime got produced the next year. Shit was really ramping up, but it hadn't even hit the states yet. That's until 1998, when Pokemon Red and Blue were released alongside the anime in America. The US got its own Americanized version of things. Englishified Pokemon names, slogans like gotta catch them all. Much like Japan, America being very consumerist took to this. It was an instant success, and like America does best, old people started complaining and getting angry about it. They're not allowed in our school because yeah. it's such a craze and people like them so much. School officials are finding that Pokemon cards are responsible for fistfights and the constant trading is not only distracting kids from classwork, but turning the playground into a black market. Back at Greenwood Elementary School today, the principal joined a list of educators banning Pokemon because the card trading is so competitive and consuming. In my opinion, parents should not let their kids watch Pokemon, play Pokemon, buy Pokemon cards, have anything whatsoever to do with Pokemon, because the message is violence. In fact, I knew many kids who weren't even allowed to play Pokemon. Well, sucks to be you, suckers. Like, sure, I guess the Pokemon fighting and they're, they're getting hurt, but it's like, it's like a video game, nerds. Get over it. It's like your parents disallowing you from watching Toy Story because Buzz and Woody get thrown around on the floor. Look, I'm a vegan too, but PETA can shut the hell up. <laughs> Pokemon was more than just a 90s video game and a card game. It infected pop culture in such a way that it became more than just a fad. It wasn't just, hey, we're gonna collect silly bands for a month and then get over it. It wasn't just, hey man, let's throw Bakugan and then next week you're into Digimon. Pokemon was long lasting. Heck, it's been over 25 years since Pokemon Red and Green came out in Japan, and it's still a behemoth. Pokemon is still going super strong. Games are still being made, many to much commercial success, and the card market is as ridiculous as ever. Pokemon the trading card game has hit peak insanity. Many people like me grew up with Pokemon and some of those people now have disposable incomes and nothing to do with them. Some people collect GameCube games, some mouth breathers collect Funko Puffs, ugh. And other collect old Pokemon cards. The prices that some of these cards have soared to is absolutely mind-boggling though. In the late 90s, you could go into card shops and buy singles for sometimes a couple dollars. I remember walking into a card shop in like 2008 and being blown away that some of the base set holographic cards went for like $20. Now they're often thousands. A further phenomenon to increase value is the concept of grading your cards and merchandise. The idea is that you pay a fee to send in a Pokemon card to a company, and they will grade your card on its pristineness from 1 to 10, locking it away in a plastic case. If you can fetch a card rating of 8, 9, or even a 10, it will go for exorbitant rates depending on the card. For example, this holographic first edition Charizard card from the base set in Pokemon, which is the first set ever released in North America, goes for $290,000 at a PSA 10. That's a house. <laughs> That's a really nice house in some areas of the US. That's like a super mega mansion in Detroit, or half of a trailer in California. Hi, this is my Pokemon binder from when I was a kid. That's cool. 
It's very funny, there's like Spongebob stickers on it. I guess I wasn't only into Pokemon. Inside of here are a bunch of my older Pokemon cards. I ended up selling a lot of the really good ones on like eBay for like $50 and stuff. Not a bunch. I still need to pay rent. I'm poor. There's a lot of cool cards in here. I think I tried to collect when I was younger all of the cards from the beginning until the end. I mean, there's a cool one. It's like a, a holographic mole trace. That probably goes for four cents and a couple buttons. A lot of these cards are drawn on. Like I would just wipe my ass with them, you know, like throw them in a blender, see how it would work. No one thought that this would be bigger than a Beanie Baby. This is one of my favorite cards though, I really like this one. So that's kind of cool that I have that. I haven't looked at these in a while. I have tins and tins of these like sitting in a bin somewhere. I didn't even know I had some Japanese ones. Some of these are probably fake too, like kids would just print them out and try to sell you them for a stick of gum. It was crazy back then, see? I don't think I'm gonna find any PSA 10s in here. But it's cool to look at, and it's very nostalgic. A lot of these make me want to cry. I used to have a lot more Pokemon toys and things, and I would show you them, but I uh, traded them all to people down my street, and then would use that money to go buy Taco Bell. I'd ride my bike to Taco Bell and buy a bean burrito. To think, I probably gave away a holographic Charizard for a bean burrito at one point, so. That's awesome. Pokemon didn't just up and go away after the winter of 1999. It kept gaining popularity in waves. Nowadays, 4-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 24-year-olds, 34-year-olds play Pokemon. It's bigger than ever. Although a bunch of nerds get really mad about the graphics on Twitter whenever a new game comes out, Pokemon still sells incredibly well. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl sold over 6 million copies within the first week this fall. Sword and Shield sold over 22 million copies, which is the best-selling mainline Pokemon game since Pokemon Golden and silver. We on to upswing. Remember Pokemon Go? That even got Uncle Joe's to step away from the NFL football and Coors Light to enjoy a stroll. That Zubat down the road isn't going to catch itself, you old fuck. Some of the recent games were made for infants, but I, I still enjoy Pokemon from time to time. I've been playing the new Legends Arceus game and some of the changes are insane. Like you can rename your Pokemon at any time. <laughs> you can change their moves whenever, like from the menu. Like how has that not been a thing for 25 years? To change my Pokemon's name in red and blue, I'd have to play the game for six hours and by the time I get there, I'd probably forgotten what I wanted to rename Raticate 2 anyway. The games hold a soft spot in my heart. I played Red and Crystal a ton growing up, and I still remember the excitement for Diamond and Pearl. The day I got Pokemon Diamond, I played it from beginning until completion in one sitting. I don't think I even ate dinner. Probably pretended I was sick and skipped the next day of school. The Pokemon games that probably hold the most nostalgia for me, other than Pokemon Crystal, were the 3D Pokemon games on the Nintendo GameCube, Pokemon Coliseum, and Pokemon XD Haha -Ha Random. I don't think they were particularly well written or anything, but the design, and especially the animations, are oozing with style. I wish we could get more Pokemon spin-offs like those games. Legends Arceus is kind of close, but those games were on another level. Plus the starters were Umbreon and Espeon, which are way better than like this thing. <laughs> doesn't even look like it wants to be a Pokemon. Sorry to the four Sobble fans watching the video. Your favorite Pokemon sucks. Sylveon is better. My favorite Pokemon could beat your favorite Pokemon up. My dad could beat your dad up. Also, he's the CEO of Steam. Also, Ratio. Plus L. Plus your white. The games aren't incredible story-wise either. They're made for kids. I mean, I highly doubt Pokemon would be very interesting to a 25-year-old who's never played one before. Looking from the outside in, it's kind of freaky even. Like, there's just a pile of sludge as a Pokemon. This Pokemon looks like it wants to kill me. Some of them are disgusting, silly, wrong, hot. <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make is that even if you've never played or interacted with Pokemon in any capacity, you probably know what a Pikachu is. I think almost anyone under the age of, like, 60 could name Pikachu by name when given the picture. Yeah, it's Mickey Mouse. Pokemon is an incredibly popular and a permanent stamp in pop culture around the world, and I think it always will be. I hope I'm still dealing Pokemon cards in the back of the old folks' home, at least. Old-ass grandpa strapped up to the metaverse watching low punny hentai. <laughs> Pokemon is a cyclical, nostalgic machine. I played it as a kid, and I like it as an adult, and my peers' kids will probably play it and then play it when they're adults. We're all hooked like it's heroin. Kurt Cobain would have loved Pikachu. Anyway, thanks, Pokemon. <laughs>
you want to get a cool Discord role, or maybe you just want to support it, I have a Patreon. I'll still be making other kinds of stuff. I have Astros S Live for gaming stuff. There's uh, cool meme videos on Know Your Meme right now. You should check those out. Working on music. Um, I stream all the time. Help me pay rent. Help me pay rent. Fuck you.